Okay, so today's video, we're gonna create one of these cool little carry cubes. This is something that you can pick up and throw around by interacting with it. So we can grab our little cube here, we can throw it around, and we can use it for a few cool tricks. Like if we come around here, we could use this to trigger a pressure plate, if I could actually land it in the right spot. So you could start making puzzles that require people to throw cubes. So this is actually a pretty simple extension on the interactable logic that we already have. We're going to create a little box. It's going to be an interactable, just like our door. The only things that get a bit more interesting are that we're going to have to extend our character so that our character has an attachment point. So let's jump in and create our carry cube to begin with. Here's my initial scene. All I've got is a rigid body with a script attached. It's got a collision shape and then we've got a box so that we can see where it is in the world. It's worth noting that our CSG box does not have collisions because all of that's handled by our rigid body. And if we have a look, we're on the default layer so we will collide with the player and we're on the interactable layer so that we can interact with it. So let's create one of these. We'll add a new rigid body as with all of our physics bodies we need to give it a shape and then we'll give it a mesh instance as well so that it has something to display so let's create a cube just so that we're the same as our tested one uh, we'll make all of these one one unit big and our collision shape will be a box shape that matches So this, that you can see the little blue lines, we perfectly line up with our display. And that's all there is to it. This one's got my funky material, but that's it. So let's save this as carry cube. I'll actually call mine carry cube two. And we'll create a new script for it. I'm gonna add it into my tutorial folder here. We can throw out most of this to begin with. We know that we're making this interactable, so we'll add our iInteractable interface. And if we jump over to our existing code, we'll just grab the body of this, because that seems easiest. Rather than writing stuff from scratch, and you guys just watching me fail to use a keyboard. So, we have an original parent, which is going to track the thing that we're attached to. We have our ready method where we grab whatever we're attached to. When we stick this into a level, like for example in our test map here, we're going to be under this extra interactable, so that'll be our parent. So we'll grab that and store that as our parent. We could be directly under the map, and I think in our little problem scene here, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I didn't save my scene, so we'll save that. Now we can instance in my cube to pull it out of the wall, stick it over here somewhere. We'll lift it up and actually I might move my character back just so that we can see what happens when it spawns into the game. And then because it's hard to see against our everything's kind of white, looks really gray, but technically it's white background. I'm gonna give it a new material. So if we come over to our mesh instance here, we have a material. We can give it a new spatial material and we can set our albedo to red. So if we run the scene, we'll see that a rigid body is a thing that reacts to physics. So it fell to the ground. I'm actually thinking based on the size of my fake little door here, this is way too big. So we'll go and make it a wee bit smaller. And maybe that'll look a wee bit better. So there we go, little physics thing. We can push it around. And that's about it for now. We have interaction text. If you're currently a child of where you started the game, then you haven't been picked up. So the text should say pick up. If you're parented to anything else, you want to be set to throw because that means the character is carrying it around. We want to display the throw text. We've set our original parent. So this in our example scene here 
is going to be the topmost spatial of our level. The only thing in the game that can interact with our little carry cube is a character. So everything else falls into this interact method. All we're doing is checking whether we're a rigid body or not. And if we are a rigid body and you pick us up, we're going to start acting as a kinematic body. Now remember that a kinematic body is something that's controlled by script, whereas a rigid body is something that's controlled by the physics in the game. So if this is up high and it's a rigid body, it'll fall straight down. If it's a kinematic body, it'll sit there. And a rigid body, we can change our mode here. So I could make it a kinematic body and we can run our scene and we'll see that it just sits in space. Whereas if it's set to be a rigid body, you'll see that it falls down because the physics engine's applying gravity to it. So when we interact with it, we will check which mode we're in. I'm going to toggle it between either rigid or kinematic. So if you're currently in rigid body mode, it means you're not being carried. So we want to change your mode to kinematic because you're being carried or you're about to be carried. We'll grab our global transform, which is our position in the world. We'll then remove the carry cube from the parent. So for a moment, it will disappear out of the map entirely. We will then grab our attachment point from the character. If I change this to character two, this will start failing. I'm not getting syntax highlighting because I don't have my script folder open. Let me just open that up. All right, now that I've got a script open in the entire project, I can get my autocomplete. So we'll need to go figure out how we're going to give a character an attachment point. And actually, let's do that first. So if I open up my character scene here and we'll open up our original character scene, when we were going through things, we've ignored this attachment point so far. So this is what we want to introduce now. So in our character, it can be under the camera, just the same. We'll just add a spatial because all we need to know is a position. So I'm just going to slide this spatial forward to somewhere that I think will be fine. It'll look just fine there and I'll rename it attachment point. So that's all we need to do to the nodes. That is our character scene all set up. The bit that we need to do now is to come over into our character two script and we're going to need that get attachment point. I'm just going to copy it from the original script. So we'll chuck a simple method down here. It is public. So anyone who has a reference to a character two can call it. And all it does is returns an attachment point node path. So again, we'll do an export up here. It will be a node path and it will be called attachment point node path. Now we can update our script here and we'll go through it. You can interact with a cube through iInteractable if you are a character too. So our new character is the only thing that can pick up our cube. If our cube hasn't been picked up because it's in rigid body physics mode, we will make it a kinematic body, which means that it will stay in place instead of physics pushing it around. We'll grab its current global transform and then remove it from its parent. So at this point, it won't actually be part of the scene anymore. Then we will grab the attachment point from our character two. The character that's interacting with us has that attachment point up front. If this is going to return null, which it could, we'll attach it directly to the character. Theoretically, this line of code will never run because we've set up our get attach point, but maybe you'll have a character in the future that doesn't actually use an attachment point or you don't want to determine an attachment point for it. In that case, we still need to make sure that our carry cube gets parented to that character, but we don't really care where on the character it goes. For our example though, we will grab that attach point, which if we quickly compile and actually set the node path for, we'll put as this little spatial here. So we've now set up this attachment point. When you pick up a carry cube, it will become a child node here, exactly the same as if we added a carry cube here. So it'll be parented in front of you just like that. When you add child, so when you make this the child of something else, we'll go and inherit their transform. So we want to figure out where we are in the world 
Then we want to reparent ourselves, which is going to mess with our transform. And then we want to reset our transform back to what it was previously. So as an example of what happens if we don't do that, if you have a node that's just a spatial, its transform is at 0, 0, 0, which means it's down at our feet. If we then move this node and parent it to our head, Godot is going to be helpful and create a new transform to make sure that we're still at the same global transform. So you can see our transform now says that we're down. If we were to set this back to zero, it'll reset our offset to be based on whatever our parent is. So that's why we grab our global transform, we let attaching change our transform, and then we reset our global transform. So when you pick up a cube, it remains at the exact same spot in the world even though it's no longer parented to the world and it's now parented to your character. And so that's all there is if all you want to do is be able to pick something up. It'll make it kinematic, it'll make it a child of your attachment point, which means it'll just follow you around on screen, locked onto that attachment point. But as we hinted up here, we don't want to just be able to pick something up. Once you've picked it up, we want to throw it. So once it's been picked up, get parent is obviously going to be equal to your character, which will not be the same as our original parent. So we'll be displaying the throw text. And when you interact, you'll be in the kinematic mode, not the rigid body mode, which means we'll come down here. So the first thing we do is change our physics mode back to rigid, which means that we're now gonna be controlled by the physics system. We'll then re-parent back to our original parent, and we're doing the exact same thing where we track our global transform we remove ourselves from our parent because you have to do that before you can be attached to a different parent. We'll attach ourselves back to the original parent and we'll fix up our global transform so that we remain at the exact same spot we were at up here. Then the last thing we do is we'll grab our character and this wants to be a character two as well. So this is the character that's interacting with the carry cube. We will find their negative z direction so the direction that they're facing we'll multiply that out 100 units into the distance and we'll apply central impulse so applying an impulse is our way of hitting something basically it's just the same as kicking a soccer ball we add a force to our cube and because it's a rigid body physics system will fire us forward aiming to be 100 units forward it will also be applying gravity and wind and everything else. And all of that will factor into where you actually wind up going. So I've got a little to do here, whether we should get our throw strength from the character, which you could do. We have our character. You could say thrower.strength instead and make this a property over here. We would make a public, I guess, float strength. And maybe set it to 100 so that it remains the same but that doesn't work for anything that's self-propelled maybe you're throwing a drone and then it will continue to fly from there or maybe you're going to be shooting a gun to send your projectile out so i couldn't work out i don't think i want it to be a character field in this case i've just put it as a number hard coded in our script but we could just as easily come up here and make a new export float throw strength we'll make it equal to 100 plug that in there and now we can edit it on our carry cube so if i build my project we grab our carry cube we can now adjust the throw strength so maybe we want it to be 500 We'll jump back to our problem scene and run it. And now when we grab this cube, oh, I can't grab the cube. Now this is a mistake I've made a couple of times. Uh, you might remember, actually take a moment and see if you can guess what the problem is. I will reveal that I forgot to put it on the interactable layer. So now that it's on the interactable layer, we should be able to run over it and pick it up. So I have pick up as my option, and when I throw it, it fires off into the distance. And it really goes for it if you don't throw it straight into a wall. And then if I wanted to make this a really heavy thing, 
I could set my throw speed to five instead of 500. Now when I pick this up and then I try and throw it, it's only got a weak little wee throw. So I think it makes most sense to put our throw strength onto the cube as an export variable instead of getting it from the character. That way we are effectively saying how hard a thing is to throw. Maybe it's really bulky and you can't really get a wind up. Or maybe it's small and super light like a golf ball so you can send it miles. Either way, this is all there is. This one little script gives you an interactable little cube that you can throw around. And then, as we were discussing earlier, it means that you can put this onto a pressure plate, say. We can start getting stuff to interact. So if I grab my little thing here, Roughly here is where my door opens. Oh, I miss. This would make a lot more sense if it had a visual display. But there is a magic trapdoor about there. It rolled over it again. This is hopeless. No, but if we grab our trapdoor here, our pressure plate, and let's make it visible because it's agonizing that it's not we'll add a mesh instance we'll make that mesh a plane why not because of the z indexing thing i'm gonna lift my plane up just slightly also my mesh instance collision doesn't actually go all the way to the ground so we'll fix up our collision shape so that it reaches to the ground or more or less on the ground. And then I'll just shrink my mesh instance just a touch to line up with my collision shape a bit better. We'll expand it out this way. So now we can actually see, well, if it weren't in the same color as everything else in the game, we will create a new spatial material and we'll give it a different color. Let's make it pale blue and let's make it entirely metallic just for laughs. So back in this scene we can actually see where our damn pressure plate is now. We'll rotate it so it's widthwise and stick it up against the wall. And now when we drop our carry cube onto it it'll open up the door for us. In this case, I happen to have dropped it on spawn, but there you go. You can throw it on to get through a door. And remember, our doors are interactable controlled, right? So let's move this forward. Take our door. Turn off is interactable. So my player can't open the door. There is no way for the player to open the door. The only thing that can open the door is standing on the platform. And you can't quite run through the door. My awesome level mat my awesome test level lets me get up on the roof like that. But if you made a level that's better, there you go. There's your first proper puzzle. There's only one possible way through the door. And you have to make use of our physics system and our collisions and all sorts of stuff, our interactables, everything in order to get through this door. So that gives us all of our gameplay stuff. The only thing that's left is to add our cool cyberpunk material. So that's what we'll do in the next video. Finish up with a cool cyberpunk material, and then we might look at actually writing some new code. Tune in for the next video.